Okay, the last couple of weeks we've been talking about graphing lines. And I'm going to summarize what we've talked about. So when uh, you're given an equation, sometimes making a table helps. Um, but hopefully you'll see a pattern uh, that will make it a little easy for you. So uh, let's make some examples like 0, 1, 2, 3 for points that we could use to find points on our line equation. So let's just say x is equal to 0. Then I would have my equation y equals 3 times 0 plus 2. Well, 3 times 0 is 0. So if that's 0, then I end up with 0 plus 2, which is 2. And this is called a starting point. So whatever this value is, whenever x is 0, uh, we're going to have 2. So this right here is our x-axis. This right here is our y-axis. So when x is 0, y, the y value is 2. And it would be right there. So, uh, and this 2 value is our, we call that our starting point. Okay. Um, it's also called the y-intercept. And we'll be using that term uh, throughout this course. So, but we've been using the word starting point lately. Okay, so now if I plug in 1 in for x, we get y equals 3 times 1 plus 2. All right, so I just multiply 1 times 3, which is 3, and 3 plus 2 equals 5. Now if I plug in 2, I get 3 times 2 plus 2. All right, if I'm plugging in... 2, plug in 1, plug in 0, I'm plugging it into this equation. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8. Now hopefully you start seeing a pattern. We'll do one more. y equals 3 times 3 plus 2. Okay. So if I plug in 3 in for x, I have 3 times 3 plus 2. Or I've written it here. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 plus 2 is 11. Okay, and one of the things you should start noticing is to get to the next number, what did we do? We added 3, right? Add 3. Added 3, right? Because 2 plus 3 gives me 5. 5 plus 3 gives me 8. 8 plus 3 gives me 11. And what we call this 3 number, we call this our rate of change. And the rate of change is equal to 3 in this example. You may have also heard last year, this name is also called slope. And sometimes I'm going to be calling this slope, and sometimes we're going to call it rate of change. So let's plot our other points here. So we have 1 comma 5, we have 2 comma 8, we have 3 comma 11. So let's plot those points. I go over 1 and up 5. I go over 2 and up 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight. And I go two comma eight. So I go over two up eight. Okay. It's running off the graph, isn't it? Now, does it just stop at a point or can I go the other direction? We can continue going the other direction here. So instead of adding 3, adding 3, adding 3, if I continue going this way, I can go over and then down 3. And you may notice if I go over 1 and down 3, 
it still has the same pattern and it makes a straight line. So all we really needed was our our rate of change and our starting point. And what really happened here is that we know we had a starting point at 2. All right, we had a starting point at 2. And we had our rate of change of 3. So because we had a rate of change at 3, that meant that every time we went over 1, we went up 3. So we went over 1 and up 3. Over 1 and up 3. And that's what happens when we have a rate of change of 3. We go over 1, up 3. Now let's do some other similar examples using what we've just done. So here I have my y-intercept or my starting point is at 2. Okay. And so when x is 0, y is 2. Now let's pick numbers that are easy to work with because I don't want to deal with this fraction. So let's pick the number if if y if if x is equal to 4. Let's pick a number that's easy to work with. Then I end up with y equals 1 fourth times 4 plus 2. So if I pick 4 for my x, then I'm going to have 4 1 fourth times 4 plus 2. Well, 1 fourth times 4 is 1, so I have y equals 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3. And I'm going to use that value, and I'm going to have the coordinate 4, comma 3. So let's go there. 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 3. 1, 2, 3. Right? 4, comma 3. Um, let's find another number. What if I say y equals, let's pick the number 8. So then I get y equals 1 fourth times 8 plus 2. Right. If I pick 8 in for x, then I have 1 fourth times 8 plus 2. Well, what is 1 fourth times 8? That's going to give me 2. And then 2 plus 2, that's going to give me 4. So this new coordinate is 8, 4. So let's graph it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And... One, two, three, four. So we have the, the point zero comma two, and then we have the point four comma three, and now we have the point eight comma four. And you may start to see if I want to get my ruler, we end up with a straight line. And our rate of change is this value here multiplied by the x. So the rate of change equals 1 fourth. And our starting point. Our starting point is 2. And having a rate of change being 1 fourth means I'm going to go to the right 4 and up 1. To the right 4 and up 1. 
Okay, you may want to hit pause and rewatch this for extra practice. Okay, let's do two more. We're going to do one where the rate of change is negative. So, in this example, our starting point is 2. Okay, so my starting point is 2, so my first point is going to be right there, because if I plug in 0 in for x, we're going to get 2. Okay, so let's plug in 1 in for x. Then I would have y equals negative 3 times 1 plus 2. Well, negative 3 times 1 is equal to negative 3 plus 2. So negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 1. So our new location, our new point is um, negative 1. Okay, now let's pick another point. 2. So now I've got y equals negative 3 times 2 plus 2. All, right. All I've done is my x value, in this first one I plugged in 1 in for x, and then multiplied negative 3 times 1, which gave me negative 3, and negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And for this black one here, I'm going to have y equals negative 3 times 2, right, because I've, I've picked 2. And negative 3 times 2 is going to give me negative 6. And negative 6 plus 2 equals negative 4. And I'm just going to do that much for right now and see if you can see the pattern to go from here to here. We subtract 3. To go from negative 1 to negative 4, we subtract 3. So my rate of change equals negative 3. So basically, my slope is negative. Now let's plot these points and see what happens. So this point here is 0, 2, right? This point here is 1 negative 1. This point here is 2, negative 4. So I go over 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, comma, negative 4. And this should give me enough points to draw my line and see the same color. So I end up with And so here the thing is, when we have a negative rate of change, my graph goes down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. Okay. So... So when we have negative rate of change, it goes, as I go to the right, it goes down. Okay, last one. Y intercept is 4. Okay, 
So zero comma four. Now let's pick numbers that make this an integer. So let's pick two and four and six. Okay. So if I have y equals negative one half times two, so if I'm picking two in place of x, then I'm going to have negative half times two plus four. Well, negative half times two is going to equal negative one plus four, which equals three. Let's do the next one. If I plug in four, then we have y equals negative one half times four plus four. So I've substituted x with four. So negative one half times four gives me negative two. And so negative two plus four is going to give me uh, two. And hopefully you'll see that the pattern, let's plot these points. So here I have zero comma four. The next one here I've got two comma three. And then the next one we've got four comma two. And as you can see, my line is going down. And our rate of change equals negative one half. Notice when it's a larger number, the slope or the rate of change is steeper. If it's a fraction less than one, it's not as steep. Okay, take careful notes, watch this over if you need extra help. You, may, you can watch this as many times as you want.